Knifing in any Resident Evil game is already a difficult task on its own, not even considering a knife only run. Knifing in a Resident Evil game is like pulling out one of those plastic school lunch knives and trying to stab someone with it. I mean, sure it's probably possible, but it takes too much time and isn't optimal. That my friends, is the challenge I am attempting today. Can you beat Resident Evil 4 with only a knife? Before we get started, let's go over the rules. I can only use the knife. I can't use anything other than the knife as a weapon, so that includes any guns, grenades, and eggs. Using the handgun to collect jewels is allowed, but it doesn't really matter because I stopped doing it early on. We start off the game and right off the bat, Leon is already breaking into a man's home to ask if he knows where the president's daughter is. I don't think he took too kindly to Leon's home invasion because he started to attack Leon. I hit him with a pump fake, juked his attack, and roundhouse kicked him into the afterlife. On my way to the village, I saved the little doggy trapped in a bear trap, and finally, we arrived at the village. Now, before this point, I only played this game once, and that was a long time ago, so I barely remember anything about the game. Also, with me being me, I came into this challenge like any other, unprepared, and I sucked at knifing. I don't know why, but for some reason, I also decided that I should kill every goddamn enemy I came across, which made this challenge 10 times harder than it had to be. The village was the point where I realized this challenge was going to be hell. After dying multiple times, I decided to go knife god mode and started slashing the hell out of all the ganados. And after a while, I did it. All the villagers went to go play their bingo. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Up ahead, I ran away from Boulder and found a poor man stuck inside a closet. The big cheese pulls up and I try to fight him, but he knocked me unconscious. When I woke up, the man told me his name was Luis Serra, and as soon as we got free, he booked it. He couldn't even give me a thank you or anything, he just straight up left. The area after this was not too difficult, but again, it took me a while because I decided to kill everyone in the area. Following my lust for murder, I killed some fishies to eat later. Leon apparently didn't learn his lesson about breaking into people's home and decided to break into the Big Cheese's house. The Big Cheese didn't like that Leon was inside his home, so he slapped on his wife beater and started choking Leon. I tried to go back through the door, but as soon as I did, the Big Cheese saw Yuki and me and jumped out of the window. Downstairs, I ruthlessly murdered a poor innocent man just trying to do his business, and I managed to kill the chainsaw guy with my knife. The swamp was easy, but I tried to kill everyone in the swamp until I realized that they kept spawning back. And here, we come to the first failure of the run, the Del Lago boss. Sadly, he can only be killed with harpoons and there is no way to knife him, so we'll count that as failure number one. On my way to get the key for the church, I met one of the worst enemies in the game, the mutated Ganado. I don't know what type of mutation this is, but it's the one that looks like a scythe. I had to dodge him until he did this one attack and then slash him in the face and kick him. The worst part about it is that I can't even attack him on the ground. I have to wait and repeat the same thing over and over. After multiple attempts, I killed him and we come to the second failure of the run. I had to shoot the hanging crates with my gun and for once, I decided not to kill the enemies in front of me. And here we are, we met the swollest man in the world, El Gigante. He was easy as hell, I mean you don't even have to waste a single bullet. I just let El Gigante follow the doggy, and while he was distracted with the dog, I cut his calves. And after doing this for a while, he died. For some reason, after I killed him, he started dancing, and then just straight up fell over and died. I got back to the church and finally saved Ashley. Now I thought this challenge was hard enough, even without Ashley, but god damn, Ashley is so freaking useless. She can't do anything on her own, and is always getting grabbed. Anyway, traversing back through the village and barn again was pretty hard, but I did it and ended up at the cabin. The cabin was pretty difficult, but if you know how to maneuver through the Ganados, it becomes slightly easier. After the cabin, we had two choices, the El Gigante path or the Ganado path. Of course, I chose the swole boy path because it's easier. I tried to fight him at first, but soon figured out that wasn't going to work, so I had to resort to the best strategy I had, running away. The ski lift was easy, but I kept getting hit by the tomahawk, and the ganados that jump on your lift aren't a problem because you can just knife them off. Apparently, the big cheese likes choking people because he choked me again and threw me into a pole. Leon uses his gun to blow up the big cheese, but this doesn't count since it's a cutscene. For some reason, ladders in this game are overly broken. I mean, the enemies can't even do anything about it. The big cheese's first phase is easy if you abuse the ladders, but his second phase was where the problem was. I tried to do the same ladder trick for a second phase, but it didn't work. And so sadly, after over an hour of failed attempts, I had to look up a video. With these challenges, I try not to search for help online, but when you get stuck on the same part for more than an hour, it gets tedious. 
If you stand between this pillar and walk back and forth, the big cheese will swing back and forth, and if you get into a rhythm, you can knife him. Luckily for me, he got stuck on the pillar and it allowed me to keep knifing him. After doing this twice, I killed the big cheese and snatched his fake eyeball. On the way to the castle, we come across another fail. I tried to knife the truck, but it didn't work, so I had to use my handgun to shoot the driver. Though every moment of this run was draining and tormenting my soul, one thing made up for it. It's called the SUPLEX! This ability is so good. You just go chop chop to their knees, break your back, and boom, their head gets blown off. Can't look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! This is probably the best ability to get rid of enemies quickly, especially with the knife. Getting back on track, I made it inside the castle, met Salazar, and it was time to fight Wolverine. He was actually really easy to kill, and after dealing with him, we get to one of the worst parts, if not the worst part of this run. This was the part that made me put off the game for 3 weeks. I tried this part for over 6 hours. 6 HOURS! You know how much stuff I could do in 6 hours? Hell, I even looked up a guide for it, but it just didn't work. At first, I tried to kill every enemy, but it was obvious that it wasn't going to work. There are 3 to 4 ways of enemies you have to fight through, and if they gang up on you in that little room, you're as good as dead. I tried this tactic for 4 to 5 hours, and usually rage quit after 30 minutes. And it didn't help that Ashley was so goddamn annoying. When the enemies were near her, she wouldn't even run away. She would just sit there and wait till she got grabbed. Also, she would yell for help every 2 seconds. I got so mad at her that at points, I would even kill her on purpose. She was one of the factors that made this part so hard. After that didn't work, there was only one other tactic. The door save tactic. When the prompt to open a door is green, it creates a checkpoint so anyone you kill or any items you collect will be saved if you exit and enter back. This saves you a lot of time and you don't have to kill or collect everything again. So I activated the lever with Ashley and left the room. When I came back, for some reason the enemies can't see you except for one person. You can kill them before you activate the lever though. Let Ashley do the cranking because the arrow guys don't attack her and boom, the bridge is down. By the way, I looked this up. What, did you expect more out of me? You guys want to know what the worst part of this area is? It's that you have to use the goddamn handgun after you lower the bridge. After all that hard work, it ended with me having to use my handgun. The levels of disappointment and rage I felt at that moment were out of this world. I guess that's fail number 4. Ashley contracted the coronavirus and started coughing up blood. She wanted to be nice and not infect Leon, so she ran away to make sure we were social distancing and ended up getting captured again. Are you serious? I went through hell so this little girl can get kidnapped again? The Novistadors were way too difficult to fight with the knife, but I managed to kill one and ran away from the rest. The room with the turret wasn't overly difficult, it just took a few attempts. I don't know why, but the red guy actually waits for you, and if you don't follow him into the room, he just waits there. You can then jump downstairs and use the door on the first floor. If you chase him and follow him out of the door quick enough, he won't hop onto his turret and you can knife him easy peasy. For the maze, I just ran past all the doggies and we got trapped in a cage with Wolverine. I knifed the lock, killed Wolverine, and the homeboy Lewis gets killed. And I failed the challenge again while saving Ashley. In the lava room, I failed again and had to shoot the chains. In the falling ceiling room, I found out that you can actually knife all the red things on the ceiling with the right positioning and timing. Another failure is slapped onto this run because I had to shoot the guys on the drill to save Ashley. For the knights guarding the king's grail, I knifed off their helmets but I had to kill them with flash grenades so that's another fail. I could have killed them knife only but that would take way too long and there was no way in hell I was going to fight 3 scythe mutated knights. You guys won't believe this, but ladies and gentlemen, we come to yet another failure. That's right, I tried to knife the Novistadors out of the air, but their hitbox is so broken, so I just shot them. I tried not to shoot them, but they're too annoying, and it doesn't even matter because we had to shoot the chain to lower the bridge. Oh, and of course, Ashley gets kidnapped again. I failed once again in the clock tower, because you can't knife the pegs. Finally, it's time to fight the twin Wolverines. Killing them wasn't too bad, it just took a long time. It took me 50 minutes in total to kill them, but that's only because I died a few times. Next, it was time to fight the ripoff alien. Now, this fight would have been easy if I had just waited until the elevator came and left. However, I didn't kill him on my first playthrough because I thought he was unkillable and wanted the achievement. So, since I was already doing this run, I decided to kill him with the knife and oh boy, that was a mistake. I had to keep running away from him and dodging his QTE. 
If he lands in front of you, you can attack him. If he lands next to you, you can attack him if you're quick enough. And if he lands behind you, keep running. You see how many things you gotta keep in mind? This whole fight was about focus and the most you can knife him after a QTE is two times. What the hell is two times gonna do? This fight was so damn difficult because after a while you start to lose focus and not pay attention to where he lands. I only beat him because I watched the guy beat him, but the guy beat him in 15 minutes. I attempted this fight for 2 hours and when I beat Vertigo, it took me 30 minutes. After going through that traumatizing fight with Vertigo, I saved and exited the game but the next time I opened Resident Evil 4, my progress got deleted and it sent me back to the water room. My save file had like 16 hours on it and it reverted back to 6, so I lost a lot of progress. Luckily, after having played through those parts already, it was a breeze to get through and this time I skipped Vertigo and it only took me 2 hours. After this, we make our way to the two El Gigantes. One was even wearing a mask so he wouldn't contract COVID. How cute. This fight was honestly a joke. It's probably difficult if I fought both of them with the knife, but who knows. I dumped one into the lava and luckily for me, there was a ladder. I climbed up the ladder, waited until he shook it, jumped down, and started knifing his butthole and balls until he died. The novice that part up ahead was pretty hard. I tried baiting them into the entrance hole and knifing them, which actually worked, but there was way too many of them and it felt like they kept spawning back. I just decided to book it and kick any novice throws in my way, and surprisingly, this method worked. For the trap room right before the minecart, I had to use my handgun because the ceiling dropped down and crushed you before you got into knifing range. I failed out the minecart sections because you can't knife the lever. The minecart was pretty difficult, only due to the fact that the ganados can mutate into the scythe plaga. I thought I spent much longer on this section, but it only took me around 25 minutes, though I had to use all my health items on this section. For the lift, I voluntarily failed by shooting at the two archers. I tried this part without killing them, but they always two-shot me and almost never missed. I'm pretty sure you could kill them with the knife somehow, but it doesn't matter now. For the big baddie Salazar, I tried knifing the one-eyed tentacle thing. Because I'm stupid, I decided to knife the tentacle for an hour and after dying, I tried out shooting it to see if it even dies. Turns out, it does no damage and I just wasted an hour. So I just killed Salazar with the handgun and we're headed off for the island. The first part of the island was challenging with the machine gun guy, but after a bunch of trial and error, I managed to stun lock him on the ladder and kill him. I had to use my handgun on the ganados behind the closing garage because I wasn't quick enough to get through. For the spiky regenerator, let it do the attack where it swings at you, slash its leg, and run past it. Keep doing this until its legs get blown off and from there you can just knife it until it dies. I saved Ashley and got stuck in the security room because of the annoying archer. This part was hard so I just tried to book it and leave Ashley, but to my surprise, a cutscene triggered and it brings Ashley to you anyway. In the wrecking ball room, I just told Ashley to wait on top and constantly dodge the mob of angry ganados until the doorway was free. The tractor part was just horrible. The first wave isn't too hard to handle, but the second wave is straight cancer. The enemies take more hits to kill and can mutate. To top it off, you have to use the handgun to shoot the trucks. I spent like 2-3 to three hours on this part and only beat it by luck. After this part, Ashley gets kidnapped again and it's time to fight this creepy crawly. You have to use the handgun to shoot the switches to open the door, but otherwise from that, you can kill it with the knife. His first phase is easy, just walk to his left or right when he attacks and knife it. The second phase is pretty easy too, just wait until it goes underground and when it comes up, slice it with the knife two times. After repeatedly doing this, it will die. I'm not gonna go over Krauser too much because, come on, we all obviously know he's a joke with the knife. The area after Krauser with all those soldier ganados was not too bad except for the area with the three turrets. This part wasn't super bad, but it took a long time because the turrets did too much damage and I killed everyone in the area. Sadly, Mike got blown up and I paid my respects to him. Because of the traumatizing and abusive past Leon had with the big cheese, the ways of the wife beater possessed Leon and it made him choke Ada. Up ahead, I saved Ashley once again, removed the parasites from our bodies, and it was time to fight the mastermind behind this whole incident, Sadler. This fight was annoying as hell, I spent 3 hours on it before I could kill him. His second phase is easy, but his first is so hard. He had to get rid of all the eyeballs on his body, but the ones on his front right leg and rear left leg sit so high up that they're hard to reach. You practically have to be standing inside his leg to reach them. It also doesn't help that behind him, there is a plaga that will attack you. I managed to get lucky and destroy the eyeball behind him, and from here you can stun lock him. If you walk to the right towards Sadler's left leg and stop just before you actually go in between his legs, you can actually knife him pretty easily. Just pull out your knife and look up and left while slashing at his eyeball. If you do this properly, you can keep Sadler in a stun lock, though you might have to experiment with the positioning at first. I messed up the stun lock and almost died. I came into this fight with only 3 heals, so I had to be extremely cautious. Ada threw down a rocket launcher, but I was like, nah fam, I got this. 
So I killed Sadler with the knife, grabbed Ashley, and we rode off into the sunset on a jet ski. So, can you beat Resident Evil 4 with only a knife? No, you can't. This challenge was honestly a waste of time and effort. I spent more than 30 hours on this challenge alone, and so far, it's been the hardest challenge I have attempted. I wouldn't recommend you do this challenge, but hey, if you want to do it and put yourself through torture, be my guest. I know it sounds like I'm just complaining a lot in the video, but I really do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like and subscribe button if you want, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.